the experiment we had last week was we threw a bunch of sticks, and the sticks were one foot long, as were the distance between these lines and the tiles. And we counted how many of the sticks crossed the, these lines. Um, and it was, in the total number of those, the total times two divided by the crosses. Um, then we got something close to being king of that world. Or in fact, it was like 3.03. So, I'm trying to figure out where this from actually from comes from. from. Mm -hmm. Here's the idea behind this stuff. Yeah. And then when you wake so, up, just to make it the math a little easier on ourselves, mm -hmm. then one of the, the idea is that we're going to go by two. So, let's just say that the sticks were two feet long, and there's an average between lines. Two feet long and more, and cast up. That would mean. Rewind the world. That's two. That's two. That's so good. And if we were to record where the midpoint is, that would be plus one. So, if we were to draw a, a dotted line, oh, yeah, actually, we'll draw a solid line. Thinking that we'll turn it into that one, which represents the distance oh. between the midpoint and the line. We'll call that arch X. And we will also trap the angle between this line and the stick and call it theta. Now we can record every possible combination of how this stick will land by some combination of how far this sticks out compared to how far it is with norm. And by this thing, I can draw one. So if we make a triangle out of this, we have a yeah. pot piece of one. Lori Hunt, please go to room 233, please. Lori Hunt, please go to room 233. Thank you. This length doesn't really matter. But we need to know how far it sticks out. That's why programming, which is what we would be equal to. Sign of theta. We'll call this L. Equals oh, L over one, or just L. Oh. And the idea is that if it sticks out, the distance that sticks out is greater than x, then it'll cross the line, right? So if you can say x is less than cosine of theta, then it crosses. Um, so, yeah, because we want L to be greater than X. So we can graph both of these things. We're also assuming that we can, we have a domain of this data. It goes from either zero to 90 degrees. Because if it goes beyond that, then we'll just measure this angle. Yes. Or this angle. So we have a domain of 0 to, we'll call it pi over 2 because we're the radians. This is where the pi comes in. And then this, as far as I can move away from the line. Staff, if you're involved with the building leadership meeting that's going on now in the library, Building leadership team meeting, meeting right now in the library. Thank you. The greatest part of this way, the midpoint can be is one, because either it will just go to this side or this side if it's a degree of that. So we'll go from zero to one, which means all the possibilities, all the possible combinations of angles, and I can draw a straight line there. All the possibilities of angles fall within this region. So we'll call it a rectangle. This is a rectangle, right? With an area of pi over 2 times 1. The, total, the area that represents every possible solution in the total equals a space pi over 2. And then if we graph cosine from 0 to pi over 2, something like that. Is anything where x, sorry, this is x, where x is less than cosine of theta, is a 
cross. So we can use a little bit of calculus magic to find out that this equals 1. Which means that the crosses represents an area of 1. Going back up to probability, it's what we want the part of the Kevin Arndt, you have a call parked on 101. Kevin Arndt, 101, please. Which comes out to be your probability of having a cross is 2 over pi. We'll have to sink in. But the idea is if 2 over pi is the crosses over the total. If you were to flip this and multiply by 2, you would get pi. Black magic to be sure. Black <laughs> magic. But that's the idea behind the Buffon's number. number. Sorry, the old problem. 